Riel Hunter. The second I say the name, I'm sure most of you have a strong reaction. But remember, she can connect the dots in this unprecedented political sex scandal like no one else. And we've never heard what she says really happened until now. Everyone is talking about Riel Hunter. Riel Hunter. Riel Hunter. This week, word of Riel Hunter telling her story went off like a bomb. Explosive tell-all. Riel calls Elizabeth Edwards crazy, venomous, and a witch on wheels. Hunter, the other woman at the center of the biggest political sex scandal of a generation. The story's false. It's completely untrue. It's ridiculous. The woman who had John Edwards' love child, seen as flaunting the affair that destroyed the one-time Democratic darling, his chance to be president of the United States, and his marriage. When you were running for president, you flat out denied having a relationship with Riel Hunter. Were you telling the truth then? Yes. The latest round in what has been a six-year onslaught of ugliness. Riel Hunter is writing a book. It's called uh, Fifty Shades of Sleaze. Perhaps the most reviled woman in America. And now, Riel Hunter is coming out of the shadows because, she says, we have it all wrong. The assumptions are dark. Riel Hunter as in man hunter, destroyer of marriage, destroyer of John Edwards. First and foremost, I'm a mom. Riel Hunter is a mom. And I'm also a woman who fell in love with a married man. I'm not the first woman who has done that, and I'm not going to be the last. But that's what happened. Do you regret falling in love with a married man? I don't regret falling in love. And I don't regret loving him, nor do I regret our, our daughter. Hunter titles her book What Really Happened and says it is the good, the bad, and the ugly. You make admissions in this. I've made mistakes. I have regrets. Do you? Oh, I do, yes. I'm definitely sorry for some of the actions that I took. I have felt very disappointed and sad about how it was handled. Her memoir begins with her past, about her decade-long nosedive into cocaine as a party girl in the 80s. Her intention is to let people know she has nothing to hide. I'm not afraid of the full truth. The full truth has good and bad in it. Born in Florida to an affluent family, Hunter spent years in California as a filmmaker and aspiring actress. Mr. Stott, are you all right? Riel then found her true passion in Eastern philosophy and eventually came to New York to become a spiritual advisor. In 2006, Hunter is 41 with a life in transition when she meets a friend for a drink at the Regency Hotel in New York. Known as a political hangout, just a table away is the former U.S. Senator who is at the top of his game, with his eyes on the White House. John Edwards, the son of a mill worker turned hotshot trial attorney, catapulted to the national stage when he ran for president in 2004, and eventually became John Kerry's vice presidential running mate. My rock, my love, and your next vice president, John Edwards. And a key to his appeal is his wife of 30 years, Elizabeth Edwards. But on this night in February 2006, a chance encounter will forever change the fate of this rising star. So he rounded the street corner and it came out of my mouth, you're so hot. The way the story goes is that Hunter sought out and seduced John Edwards at the Regency Hotel in New York. She laughs at that suggestion. Did you go there looking for John Edwards? No. Were you stalking John Edwards? No. I thought that I could help him. I could see that the man that I met that was in front of me was not the man that was being projected on TV. For better or worse? Um, much better in person. And so I thought that I could help him merge the two. But John Edwards has a very different merger in mind. He invites you to his hotel room. Usually a situation that you avoid when it's a married man. Fair point? Yes. Why did you go? I went there because I believed that I could help him. Help him with what? <laughs> well, I mean, you. like, what a joke. No, like, from the, the, the outside world looking in, like, boy, did you sure help him. But in that moment, Riel Hunter says she isn't sitting across from a presidential hopeful. He's just a guy she calls Johnny. And he eventually persuaded me to come sit with him on the bed. What would follow is what Riel calls one of the best nights of her life. Still, she thought it was a one-night stand. The chances are high this was, I'd be left with memories. That was it. Oh well, whatever. Um, it was a great night. And, and move on. 
But John Edwards decides to risk it all. Less than 24 hours later, Hunter says Edwards calls and says, I miss you so bad. I was surprised. I couldn't believe he was calling me. <laughs> I liked him. <laughs> now, is the radar going off? A lot of bad bells going off in this type of situation. Something right? happened internally with me. Um, I responded. Just a vibe, an energy, a pull to him. An intensity like a rock concert. Uh, a lot of energy. But these aren't giddy teenagers, they are adults, one preparing to run for leader of the free world. Hunter says Edwards makes it clear he has a new ambition, her. How did he express that to you in a way that you believed? We could not get enough of each other on the telephone. We would spend, if we were not together, we would be talking on the phone about four hours every night. We couldn't hang up. Any doubts she feels about being with a married man vanish when John Edwards tells her his storybook romance with Elizabeth is a sham. Their marriage was ruined before I got there. Years before I got there. He tells you something about his personal life that makes it very clear that he's available. He has other relationships. He tells you there have been other women in his life. Yes, I was not the first. Hunter says Edwards tells her he has three different mistresses in three different cities and that they would call him on a secret cell phone. Information like this would send most women in the opposite direction, but not Riel. Why did I fall in love with John Edwards? There is something that happens between us that is indescribable, and it is a mystery. Where was the run away now instinct in you. Where was that? I think that the only way that I can answer that is I stayed in for love. Love. Madly in love. Which overrode reason? Always. Love always overrides your mind. Like, why couldn't I walk away? I like, <laughs> asked myself many times. Like, just walk away.